Good morning, yes. I have to say, and uh, the two other speakers said the same thing, um, when I started my public health training in, I'm aging myself now, 2000, 2001, global mental health was um, not really understood. Uh, people were really surprised that I was interested in mental health within a public health perspective. And now, you know, 13 years later, we have this room. Um, and so this is very exciting for me. So this is fabulous. Um, all right. So uh, the two previous speakers, we've touched upon this quite a bit, and so I'll, I'll move through, but we've, for all of you being in this room, it's obvious why there's need for global mental health. We know that there are millions of people suffering um, around the world, and, and so the idea is that mental health is tied to physical health. And we can't, you know, people study diabetes and HIV and cardiovascular disease knowing very well that mental health is tied to all of that. And so the research is there. We have the data to support the need to do this type of work. Gary just spoke about the disability adjusted life year. So I'm going to go through it because uh, we, we went through this. Um, so the idea is, is really there's a shortage. And so a lot of our work is in low and middle income countries. And there's a shortage of not just psychiatrists and psychologists, but of psychiatric nurses, of social workers, um, community health workers. And so uh, right now we do a lot of work in Liberia. And for 3.5 million people, there is one psychiatrist in that country. Absolutely no psychologists, no social workers. Um, and where the Carter Center has now been uh, working to train psychiatric nurses. Um, I'm embarrassed to say that our Department of Psychiatry at Mass General Hospital has 650 PhDs and MDs. Um, it's embarrassing in a way when we go into these countries where there's one psychiatrist, maybe two, for millions of people. And so this is just a quick map of, of looking at the distribution of psychiatrists uh, throughout the world. And so the idea of this talk is really about what is our role as academic medical centers? What is our role as Mass General Hospital and Harvard Medical School in helping these low and middle income countries? And so the idea is in what, you know, working in we've Ethiopia and Uganda and Liberia, what we hear a lot about is the brain drain. A lot of people want to be able to work in their countries. But there's just not the educational opportunities for them to work there. There's not the financial resources to, to pay them a competitive salary to stay. And so a lot of very bright, very hardworking people are being trained overseas and then staying overseas and not returning back to their country. And so the idea really is about capacity building. You know, we as Mass General will say, yes, we very easily can go into these countries and help provide clinical care. It's our ethical responsibility. But the idea is that it's also our ethical responsibility to build capacity in these countries. So if a country like Liberia, Liberians should be taking care of Liberians. They recently came out of a uh, civil war in 2003. One psychiatrist is not sufficient to take care of that entire country. And so, uh, the idea is really being able to build a capacity, build a workforce across the continuum in both community health workers all the way up through psychiatrists to be able to take care of a population. Now, are you flipping when I have five minutes? Great. Okay. Uh, so there is a critical need, I think, for high income countries to be collaborating and working with low and middle income countries and to be able to develop leadership within those countries. And so, uh, and we'll, we'll go through an example uh, in Ethiopia. I have way too many wires here. This is like unbelievable. Um, in Ethiopia, uh, in Addis, in the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, in 2003, they had three psychiatrists for 80 million people. And these psychiatrists would travel all over the country and uh, was in a really bad accident actually during the traveling of going into these rural areas. And so they partnered with Toronto. And in the course uh, from 2003 to today, Ethiopia has 48 psychiatrists. They now have a PhD in mental health and now they're developing a psychology and neurology program. And the idea was that Toronto, the University of Toronto, basically partnered with Addis 
and said, we are going to send a team from our university to your university and we're gonna start this program. We're gonna start a residency program. And slowly, over the years, the country now has 48 psychiatrists and now developing other type of workforce. And so, and I say this is Toronto did this on no budget, right? They did this with no money. They had support of their university and they were able to partner with, with Addis and to be able to, to help with their residency programs. So the idea is that as, as academic medical centers, we have a responsibility to be able to build capacity in these other countries. Now I'm a researcher, I have a, a PhD, I, I'm a scientist, and over the years in being this, in this field, I'm, my, my interest is starting to shift a little bit into capacity building. Because even in science, even in research, we are getting a lot of feedback from our medical students in Liberia and Ethiopia wanting to do their own scientific research, wanting to be able to, to be competitive in applying for grant funding. And so we've spent a lot of time actually doing a lot of training on research and building grants offices across these countries. Um, so it's not just basic clinical care in psychiatry and psychology and social work, but through the spectrum of also scientific research as well. So um, um, we, we talked a little about, about this this morning, this idea of twinning and task shifting. And so the example I gave between Ethiopia and Toronto is an example of twinning. And that is when a high income country collaborates with a low income country in terms of building capacity. And it's a long term commitment between these two institutions. That is a twinning partnership. And the idea is that we don't just go in as a academic medical center and, and give all our knowledge to a low and middle income country. The idea is a bi-directional partnership. We have just as much to learn as an academic medical center here in the United States as we have to share to other institutions as well. And so the idea is, I use the word bi-directionality all the time, is I come back usually from all of our trips probably learning a lot more uh, than I probably taught <laughs> the, the institution. And so that is a twinning partnership. Task shifting is, is the idea of, and what Gary spoke about earlier, is that we don't always have to train only psychiatrists or psychologists. That mental health care can be provided through a continuum. And so the idea is that can we take some of the things that we do here in the United States that maybe psychiatrists or psychologists do and task shift it to nurses and community health workers. In Ethiopia, uh, they have uh, health, they call it health extension workers. And each little sub-district of Ethiopia is assigned two health extension workers. And it's women, these are two women. And their responsibility is to know the health of every household in their district. These women have knowledge that none of us will ever be able to obtain. They know more information about these households than anyone does sitting at the hospital. They should be recruited for mental health as well. And so the government of Ethiopia is now trying to expand their training for mental health. Because 48 psychiatrists in Ethiopia is still not enough for 80 million people. But you have these two women in these sub-districts whose responsibility is to know what is happening in every household. They serve a very, very important role in mental health care. And so the idea is to build capacity across the continuum. So you have twinning and task shifting, which is partnering the two institutions, long-term commitment for us to learn from each other, but also taking that and doing task shifting and really building upon uh, nurses and, and community health workers as well. <clears throat> and so the idea is what is a potential strategy, right? There's many ways to do this. And so, uh, you know, we currently have a global center of global health at Mass General Hospital. And the idea is that within that center of global health, we also have a global psychiatry department. And the idea is that that department should really be partnering with other medical schools, other universities, other institutions in low and middle income countries. 
So let me tell you a little bit about our division. It's the Chester Pierce Division of Global Psychiatry. And really, our, uh, when the department first started in early 2000, it was really based on the interest of our residents of wanting to do global research and global clinical work. And so we had a surge of interest within our residents. And the idea was that our residents can't effectively treat people in Boston and other areas of the country with just the training that they have locally, that there is a lot to learn about going overseas and learning how mental health is, is exhibited. And we are a diverse culture here in the country. And so what our residents learn when they go overseas, they come back and they apply to their own clinical care. And so that's really where our division started. And then as time went on, we really took it upon ourselves that we have an ethical responsibility also um, to teach and to build capacity in other institutions as well across the world. And so our approach is, is a cyclical process of, it's not just scientific research, um, but it's also based on policy development, capacity building, and sustainability and evaluation. Now you can see the arrows keep going around and around and around, right? Because the idea is these things don't happen in a silo. And Liberia, for example, uh, currently starting a psychiatry residency program, but they don't have a grants office and they really want to apply to start doing research in their country because we also don't really have that much data. And so we can develop a residency program all we want and we can take Mass General's uh, program. I really, five minutes? My goodness. Um, we can take Mass General's program and kind of dump it at the University of Liberia. It's not gonna work, right? How we train our residents at Mass General is not the way we should be training residents in Liberia because the patient population that they're going to take care of is very different than the patient population here in the United States. So we need research. We need to understand how mental health, manif how distress manifests itself in Liberia. They don't have a grants office. So what did we do? decided to develop a grants office. And so that's also part of capacity building. And so we hired uh, Liberian staff and trained them about NIH policies and everything that you can imagine that goes into a grants office. And we recently applied collaboratively to a grant together. And they are now a standalone institution that can do that. The idea also is back in 2003, 2004, uh, when the new president took over in Liberia, they did not have a mental health policy. And so partnering with Mass General, we helped develop the mental health policy. But the mental health policy accepted by their government just kind of sits there unless someone implements it. And so hence the collaboration between the University of Liberia and Mass General to be able to take this policy and implement it. And doing that is building capacity as well. So back to our residents, we have seen a surge in interest in global mental health. Um, it's one of the reasons I, we recruit such highly, I think, competitive uh, residents is because we have a global division within our psychiatry department. And so residents are not only interested in doing research overseas, but also interested in doing clinical work overseas. Paula, we, we actually did have a uh, year one resident right now who's really driven by policy, has worked a lot with WHO. And so our department is able to uh, train our residents now. And because there's such an interest, and you can see in this room, this huge interest in global mental health. And so in the global track for our residents, um, they can do research, we have policy, we have clinical service. And what happens is when our residents do go overseas, they go one month during their year three, and they can go up to a three month rotation in year four. We've recently have been sending residents out even during year one and two if they can carve it out. We're getting uh, more and more residents interested in doing this type of work. With that being said, um, in this room as well, we recently were funded for our NIH T32 uh, Global Fellowship. And basically it came from this interest, right? There's a lot of people who are interested in global mental health and we realized that there's no real formal training. I was never formally trained. I have a, a PhD in public health, but no one really formally trained me on how to do this, right? We have a team of psychiatrists and psychologists 
who do this work, but there's no formal training that they went through. And because of this interest here, the idea was we applied for an NIH T32, and I think we recruited one of Judith Bass's uh, uh, students, actually, who will be starting um, this sh in, in July. But the idea is to formally train people on how to do clinical and research. And we originally wrote the grant for MDs in psychiatry and PhDs in psychology and then got inundated with public health, saying we too want to learn how to do this. We too want a formal fellowship to be able to do this. So we opened it up to the NIH and the NIH accepted. So now we have uh, an MD psychiatrist, a PhD in psychology, and a PhD in public health starting July 1st for a three-year intensive global clinical fellowship. And the idea is to work in these countries, build these relationships, and, and, and have this bi-directional learning both for our, our fellows and also for the countries that we're in. And so to end, because I, I, I know you're going to kick me out soon, <laughs> the idea is that as academic medical centers, we have an ethical responsibility to really work in these countries to build capacity. And so the idea is this twinning and task shifting relationship between the two institutions. And I always like to end with this quote, is you must be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you.